By 1869, scientists had discovered, using electrolysis and other chemical techniques, 63 different elements. And this was enough for them to start noticing lots of different patterns or trends in the way that they behave chemically. Now you could just list the elements in order from lightest to heaviest, but then any trends would not be clear. Remember, no one knew how heavy atoms were. They only knew how heavy they were compared to each other. Hydrogen, being the lightest of all atoms, was given a weight of one. In 1869, Russian scientist Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev arranged the then known elements not only in order of increasing atomic weight, but also in a table which made the trends really obvious. Let's have a look at some of these trends. This is lithium, a type of metal. It has to be stored under oil because it reacts very quickly with oxygen and with water. It's soft enough to be cut with a knife. You can see the pure lustrous lithium metal once I've cut through it, but the luster doesn't last long because it reacts so quickly. The equation for lithium's reaction with oxygen is lithium plus oxygen produces lithium oxide. We can see that for every pair of oxygen atoms, two Li2Os are produced, which means that we need a total of four lithium atoms to react with every pair of oxygen atoms. The balanced equation is therefore 4Li plus O2 produces 2Li2O. Lithium reacts readily with water. The equation for the reaction is lithium plus water produces hydrogen, that's what's in the bubbles being produced, plus lithium hydroxide, which remains dissolved in the water so we can't see it. In symbols, 2Li plus 2H2O produces H2 plus 2LiOH. This is sodium. Sodium is also, like lithium, a soft silvery metal which is very reactive, more so in fact than lithium. It quickly corrodes in the air to produce the light grey sodium oxide layer that you can see on this sample. The equation for sodium's chemical reaction with oxygen is sodium plus oxygen produces sodium oxide. 4Na plus O2 produces 2Na2O. It also reacts with water in the same way as lithium does, but even more vigorously. Sodium plus water produces hydrogen plus sodium hydroxide. 2Na plus 2H2O produces H2 plus 2NaOH. Quite often, so much heat is generated in the reaction that the hydrogen ignites. In fact, a large chunk of sodium will explode. Notice that the chemical equations for the reactions of the two metals with oxygen are the same and so are the equations for their reactions with water. Potassium is another metal which is very, very reactive. The chemical equations for its reactions with oxygen and with water are the same again. Clearly these metals belong together in a group, so Mendeleev organized his periodic table to place these metals in a group. Here they are here, lithium, sodium and potassium. So how did he come up with the whole table? Let's have a look. He first placed hydrogen at the top of what he called group one. He knew that when hydrogen reacts with oxygen, it produces water, H2O. The ratio of hydrogen atoms to oxygen atoms in H2O is two to one. Why is this important? Well, the reaction of each element with oxygen was one of the keys to organizing the elements into a periodic table, as we're about to see. The next heaviest element is helium, but helium hadn't been discovered. The next heaviest known element was lithium, whose atoms are seven times heavier than hydrogen atoms. Since lithium produces Li2O when it reacts with oxygen, a two to one ratio of lithium atoms to oxygen atoms, Mendeleev decided to put lithium in the same group as hydrogen. He then arranged beryllium, boron, 
This has been a short excerpt from Shedding Light on Atoms Episode 4, The Periodic Table, part of the Shedding Light on Atoms series, which documents the development of our ideas about atoms, while at the same time teaching students everything they need to know about modern chemistry. In this episode, we begin by showing students that elements can, at a simple level, be classified into metals and non-metals. We look at how the invention of the first battery in the year 1800 soon led to the discovery of many new elements. And at how aluminium, or aluminium, is still made using electricity today. We then explain how, in the late 1860s, Dmitri Mendeleev devised the first periodic table which organised the then known elements into groups based on how they behaved chemically. We finish by describing how he was able to predict not just the existence of many elements that hadn't been discovered, but also many of their properties as well. Thanks for watching.